Hello Retro Computing fans and welcome to another video from Flash Jazz Cat. Now you may remember in a recent video I restored the case or started to restore the case of an Atari 1200XL, that rare and sought after machine uh, which had arrived from Italy looking in a terrible state. Now the machine uh, was also slated to receive uh, several upgrades including Ultimate 1 Megabyte and UAV and in this video uh, I figured it was high time uh, we had another look at installing Ultimate 1 Megabyte in a 1200XL since this is an interesting upgrade uh, which requires an initial conversion to a single chip uh, OS ROM configuration and uh, it's well worth taking a look at. I have already covered this in uh, older videos but they were I think live streams and uh, a little long and probably not optimal uh, as an instructional tool so we're going to do a, a nicely edited um, installation video showing ultimate one megabyte in an Atari 1200 XL. Okay so we're converting this board to a single ROM chip XL XE configuration I've already took the two uh, OS ROM sockets the 24 pin OS ROM sockets off the board here and I'm going to do the same to the uh, MMU socket actually because I'm going to put a nice precision socket under there and I will put on the screen uh, the uh, Retrobits um, Atari 1200XL PBI modification of which this process is a part uh, obviously we're not going to do the PBI modification itself uh, but we are going to uh, convert this to a single OS ROM chip machine we've taken those sockets off the board uh, some people like to extend the short socket in one of the uh, OS ROM slots. I think uh, we're going to use the... I don't know which one we're going to use actually. Some people just like to extend them. Some uh, 1200XLs actually ship with 28 pin sockets in place already. You may wish to uh, just use what's there. Uh, take both the ROM chips out, the short ROMs, and then you've got a ready-made receptacle for Ultimate 1 Megabyte. But I do like to use... Uh, precision sockets when I'm doing these jobs. I always use precision sockets or turn sockets as some people call them. So these come out as a matter of course. And now I'm going to do the MMU because I forgot to film the removal of the uh, OS ROM sockets uh, and in order when the monitor uh, went to sleep. So uh, we'll go, we'll turn the uh, desoldering gun on again and we'll do the uh, MMU uh, socket as well just to show you the desoldering process. So I'm going to add more solder on the bottom of the chip. This just helps things to flow a little bit because this solder has been sitting here for nearly 40 years now. I'm not sure whether this uh, original solder has lead in it or not. Probably not. I'm guessing it won't. Uh, lead free solder is absolutely awful stuff to work with but obviously it's used in professional production environments quite a lot. Uh, but regardless of that we have added 6040 solder here so that we can get things moving nice and fast. We've got a capacitor here, 74LS14. Now why is that? Is this a factory fix? That is very interesting indeed. Hmm. We'll make a mental note of that for later on. Right, so we've finished that for now, turn that off. Now I'm going to add some lovely flux. Right, so now we're going to go along here with our wick. Okay, so now let's flip the board over. Right, so we've got the board flipped over, let's take the IC out. And let's give this a little feel to see if it's ready to go. And you must not force this at all. If it doesn't feel like it's going to just more or less fall out or pop out, do not force it at all. Because the last thing you want is for the thing to come out, but with traces hanging off the bottom. So I think we'll add a little bit of heat there. Oh, that looks 
looks like it's ready to go. There's one leg that we pick off. There we are. That's just pinged off into the distance. There's our MMU site, which we are now going to clean up just a little bit, just to get rid of any burrs of soil that are still there with a little bit of wick and flux won't overwork it because these boards can be a little bit fragile so we're going to be nice and quick remove any little bits of any little sharp edges that remain uh, back looks nice and tidy as well I'll just go over there make sure there's nothing left and now finally a little squirt of alcohol because we know we've got no sharp edges because we've wicked them all away so we're not going to tear anything here and that's what we end up with nice and neat ready for a new socket all right so i'm going to select myself a nice precision socket 28 pin and a 20 pin uh, that's going to go in here i'm going to inspect this that's uh, belt and braces but I'm, i like to inspect the uh the the vs and traces before I put anything in because if I find a problem if I did a boo boo I'd rather know about it before I put the socket in than after but you yeah, are this these are oh, yeah, absolutely beautiful I hope my finger's not in not under the uh, one of the pins I'm going to heat up I'll do the corners actually and I'll just hold it by the middle I'll do two corners there we go no problem at all. Now we do the other four, the corner diagonally opposite. Then I'll push down, or push up, rather, and that should now sit flat on the board. Yes, that looks very nice. Now, ultimate one megabyte. This machine's actually going to be used with a side three cartridge. <laughs> Once I've filed the case down, <laughs> um, but. Uh, one of the nice things about um, Ultimate One Megabyte is an internal upgrade and Side 3 or Side 2 is that it gives you a PBI, a proper PBI hard disk uh, on a machine like the uh, 1200XL or the XEGS which doesn't have a parallel uh, port on the back so you can't plug in uh, an IDE Plus or um, well, is there any other PBI hard disk adapter currently on the market? Um, I can't think of one at the moment. But you can't plug in, uh, anything like that into one of these machines. So, But it's got a cartridge port. So this combo of, of hardware does give you something that the machine really doesn't um, normally physically allow you to do. Right, so that's that one done. So the OS ROM is going to go in the back. Uh, if we were going to do this, if you wanted to modify a 1200X, I'll just have internal basic. Uh, you can actually use this vacant uh, socket down here. Put a second 24-pin a socket in. Well, you already had a 24-pin socket, um, but you could, or you could put basic on an EEPROM uh, with a larger. Uh, 28 pin socket that's described in the guide you can do this modification to get internal basic and a standard uh, XL XE MMU um, so it would, for all the world it would operate like a, an XL without a PBI all right so there's our two sockets now before we uh, can whack uh, and a standard XL MMU and OS ROM in here. There's a couple more steps we need to do. We need to do um, a little bit of wiring and we need to move some jumpers, which are described again in the guide. All right, so there are two jumpers that need to move according to Bob's instructions. Uh, we need um, all the jumpers out apart from W11, W12 and W9. Now we've already got W9 in place there so we will remove uh, W8 and W7 and we'll try and reuse them so we'll just put them uh, back uh, in the original positions. 
And we need to clear the holes for W11 and W12. <coughs> we can fill in the rest of them that we've just taken out. Now we can those uh, resistors that we previously removed, we can pop into the uh, appropriate holes. So. There you go. Then we need to remove this jumper W6 because we're going to take um, A13, another address line, and send it to one of the OS ROM sockets. Right, so we're going to take a wire from here, top part of W6, all the way over to uh, pin 23 of the CPU, which is E13. And that just immediately made the joint look ten times better. Ah, oh, I love flux. I can't have too much flux. It's just so damn expensive, unfortunately. This is the stuff, in case you're wondering and you don't already know. Amtech NC559 ASM. I've got a new tube. This is the new stuff. NC559 V2TF, so this is new and improved. Uh, I'm quite excited to start using that one. Okay, so with that wire in position, I think we should be able to put an XL, uh, XE, uh, OS ROM and MMU into the board. That has now got a single OS ROM chip and a standard XL, XL, XE rather, MMU. So let's plug the monitor in and we should get a boot. And if the machine doesn't work at this point, you've done something wrong and stop here and do not proceed. everybody we had a bit of off-camera action here when I realized when I first tested this machine it did not work because I had decided to use the rear socket the top socket for the OS ROM and this required a completely different arrangement of jumpers now the reason that I did previously use the rear socket uh, which is the opposite socket to what Bob suggests uh, in his PBI guide uh, was just to leave space for uh, an overhanging dual pokey board. But we're not going to have that in this machine, so I figured for the sake of clarity and just to keep things uh, in line with the instructions as they're written, I've installed another socket here off camera and uh, moved the OS ROM socket to uh, that one. And this allows me to keep the same jumper arrangement uh, as described in the guide, so we will. Uh, nothing ever goes smoothly. This was supposed to be a super, super efficient, super duper efficient uh, guide with no deviations, but there we go. So with the OS ROM chip in the front socket now, as per the instructions, we should now get a boot, which we do. Of course, the picture's dark. I haven't rigged up the Chrome or done any kind of video mods on this machine. I won't be bothering, actually, because it's going to get UEV. Uh, but there we go, so this is a 100% uh, 
XL XE compliant machine now thanks to those modifications we did earlier. Okay so now we know the machine boots in the new configuration and we weren't going to proceed until we knew that that was the case we can go ahead and prep the machine for ultimate one megabyte. So we're going to take this uh, inductor off the board. In fact in a previous video I did uh, mount uh, ultimate in a completely different spot um, which was up over here. I don't quite know why, I mean it, uh, it's really up to you where you put the thing. This is just a suggested spot. Uh, and one of the reasons I would advocate uh, putting the board, and it's going to be around about uh, this position here, and one of the reasons that I would advocate for this, because this is just about as close as we can get to the MMU and the OS ROM socket. And that's going to keep our cable runs as short as they possibly can be because we don't want to, if we can possibly avoid injecting tons and tons of ribbon cable into the system, lengthening the uh, address lines and data lines and introducing um, additional capacitance on the system, the, the more we can do to avoid that the better. Now I think the other position I'd put the thing was over here. Now that means it's going to mean the, the ribbon cable going to the uh, OS ROM connector and the MMU are going to be significantly longer, especially the the OS ROM cable. It probably won't cause a problem, uh, but there's really no good reason uh, why we shouldn't just put the thing up here. As I say, this, this inductor isn't needed uh, and it's going to be nice and neat and it's going to keep everything nice and localised. Um, so that's where we'll put it in this uh, particular installation. But if you wanted to put it, if you had something here that was in the way uh, for example, you might have put a Sophia DVI, for example, and that would prevent you from actually putting the ultimate uh, board in this exact position, uh, because that would go right through the middle of the adapter. Uh, you, could, uh, you could possibly nudge it further along, but in that case, if you have Sophia DVI in this position, uh, I would suggest that you put the ultimate board over here and route your cables accordingly. Uh, and do put both standoffs in. Don't just hang the the board off one uh, support. You get you do get two standoffs and screws and nuts in the kit now. Although you don't get any washers, <coughs> no washers. And um, so yes, do do mount the thing securely. But you probably will need need to make yourself a brand new OS ROM cable. I probably will as well for this. Even when the board's here, I'll probably have to make a new OS ROM cable because I don't know it's going to reach. Um, but if you put the thing over here, to keep this area free, uh, you are going to have to make a new cable, certainly, for the OS ROM. So, uh, I've seen people mount them this way on. You could probably get away with that. Um, you could possibly drill through that. You're going to have to look to see... I don't think there's anything on the other side here, so you could, yeah, you could put a hole through that piece of uh, ground area there if you wanted to. There are different ways of doing it, but my personal favourite is this one here. Because what I want is for the MMU cable to do a sort of a right angle twist here and just come straight at the MMU from the back there. Uh, so yes, that's right. So these two holes here, the pre-drilled holes in fact, that one and that one are going to be perfect for the job. Absolutely perfect. And that looks nice and clean. There's our two holes. Okay, so we'll go ahead and thread these through here. quite tight but just right. Pop these on here, pop the board on top, you could actually sit the board lower than this but I don't think it's going to be a problem anyway with this uh, particular machine. And you could probably mount the board a little bit further back and keep that inductor there if you wanted to. I just To me it's just a it's just a total care situation. I'm not not something I'm going to worry about. Okay, so we'll tighten those up. 
for now. And as you can see, we've got a nice sturdy board, nicely mounted, very nice, nice and square, near enough to square. There we go. So now we're going to have to think about uh, routing our cables. What I think we'll do first is we will route the four wires, signal pickoff wires, and to the various points on the board because there's some quite interesting little locations around here where we can pick off these signals. Alright, so I've done a little bit of off-camera work uh, because I, I had no choice in the matter. It was just some noise going on. Um, so I, I found it just much easier to uh, press on without the camera. Uh, but anyway, so all I've done since we last saw this board is basically the wiring. So the wiring from the P2 header on the board here, I've just chosen to tuck it underneath where the MMU cable is going to go. And there are connection points around the MMU and just up here, which I will flash up on the screen. These are the same connection points that... Um, Candle Sin, uh, our friend Sebastian, used when he originally designed this board. In fact, this whole installation is a carbon copy of his original instructions way back in 2011 or so, I think, so about 10 years ago, uh, and everything is exactly the same. I happen to like that, and of course I also made uh, new cables. Now this ribbon cable, what I really would like to do, uh, I keep saying stuff like this, I'm not very... I like to write things, but I'm not very good at actually getting it done. Um, is to draw up a, a list of cable lengths for common locations for this kind of upgrade. I've measured this cable. This one is actually uh, 24 centimeters long, significantly longer than the one that was supplied. But that's uh, we can't really help that. Um, and I'm going to need to buy some more ribbon cable now. Let's go through that stuff like there's no tomorrow. But uh, yeah, so that's going to plug in here. I'm going to put in, as, as for the MMU cable, this one is the original cable. I think I replaced the uh, transitional connector up here. Uh, it's about half the length of the original cable that came in, and that just plugs in. It's done a very short run, so as you can see, it's a direct route. Uh, very, very short run to the MMU here. And then we've got the uh, OS ROM cable, which we can plug in here and goes all the way along there. You might be able to find a different way to fold this stuff up. Never could figure it out. I mean, it would be nice if it could turn here and then just go straight in from this side. But you, what you can end up with, if you don't come in from the right side, is that you end up with the pin one at the wrong end of the connector and you get yourself into all sorts of knots. So this is a reasonably direct uh, means of traversing the board. Um, so that's it basically, that is the end of the ultimate one megabyte installation. So I think what we'll do is we'll power up, make sure the thing actually works. And it doesn't work because I managed to put the MMU cable in, one pin shifted to far along. Okay, let's turn it on. And we get a picture. It's very dark, of course, because it's got the awful... It hasn't even got the chroma hooked up on the video jack. Um, but as you can see, we get uh, Sparta Dars X booting. It should actually go straight to the bias. I've been through this before. I'm not gonna. I'm not even going to go there. But uh, <laughs> when you first turn it on for the first time. But it does work anyway. Alright, to make sure that we don't get feature creep on this video, I'm just going to leave it there. No SIO, 5 volt modifications, video modifications or anything like that. That's just what you need to do to the machine to prepare it uh, for ultimate one megabyte and ultimate one megabyte in and working and then you would proceed from there with the other common um, 1200 XL jobs. I've got a video on uh, repairing the keyboard mylar on the 1200 XL uh, and the other things I'm going to happen to do to this computer I will document in a separate video and I think in the future at some point uh, with one of my old machines. I've been meaning for years to, because I've got four 1200 XLs, one of them's already been heavily modified, the rest are stock, and for years I've been meaning to find the time to put 
my spare VBXE and Ultimate and stuff like that. Put them in that machine. No PBI modifications, anything like that, or five volt power supplies. Just a nice, straightforward, upgraded machine. And when I do that, I'll film it and I will show you uh, things like the clear pick modification, the keyboard modification, 5 volts on the SIO connector, and all the common things, um, as well as putting the upgrades into the machine. Um, so hopefully I'll get around to doing that at some point in the future. Uh, but that is it for now. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you find it useful. Now I did do a video on, on this particular subject previously, but it was a live stream, it was a bit long, it was a bit all over the place and the camera work wasn't so good. I'm not saying it's great now, but it was worse. <laughs> so um, hopefully you find it a useful reference. And having said that, thank you very, very much for watching indeed. Sorry about the pause between videos, I'm trying to get to the to the next one. This is all part and parcel of it, It's I'm trying to get the footage done. Uh, but there's lots going on at the moment, uh, I've got a lot of work on, uh, I've got a lot of other things going on as well, some good, some bad, which I won't bore you with at the moment on a YouTube video, but uh, your support is always appreciated, and uh, I have opened Patreon again, um, the link is in the description if you would like to um, support me with uh, a few dollars a month or whatever you think is appropriate. Of course, we appreciate uh, one-off PayPal donations and that kind of thing. So it's shilling time. Yes, it is. I'm trying to diversify here as well. Uh, don't tell anybody in the Atari world, but I might have a Spectrum coming in. <laughs> so uh, that could be a lot of fun. Uh, the more the merrier. And all the hours God sends. Uh, when I can, I want to devote to this. And I've got lots of things to fix, lots of things to upgrade. Uh, lots of stuff to do and when I can I will video it uh, if you want to watch it so uh, all that being said uh, thank you very much indeed and uh, I will see you in the next video all being well so bye bye for now <laughs>